I ain't been broke in a minute. I'm trying to run these digits. Put my little bro on the penny. We hop out the car with extensions. These niggas be pistols, they switch it. Playing with a bro, then you go on the mission. Me and my niggas, we all on the mission. Focus on money, ain't worried about bitches. All right, y'all, so in this one, we're going to do a little bit of learning, man. This video is going to be about nine minion strategies to help you win more games, y'all. Let's jump into it. Hey, guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm going to give you nine minion strategies to improve your chances of winning. Okay. Number one, lane cutting. Lane cutting Ooh. is a strategy where you clear the enemy minion. Very, very important strategy, this one right here, man. Like, lane cutting is very big because it'll allow you to actually rotate mid lane. And so if you're as an EXP laner, you can rotate mid lane and you'll be able to apply some support and pressure for like objectives and things like that. And your your um your minions will continue pushing or your the enemy's EXP laner is gonna be behind. So if you have a hero capable of actually um doing this, it's always gonna be very, very beneficial, but only certain heroes can do it. So make sure you have a good, strong hero to do this with because you don't want to be out here doing this with a freaking a la carte <laughs> before they meet your own minion wave example is this Rui at the start of the game I will go in between these enemy towers to clear the minion wave by doing so I get to clear it faster rather than waiting for them to meet in the middle now I have more time to do other things while my opponent is stuck clearing the lane Yep. I'm also giving vision information for my team about their jungler position. On the second minion wave, you can advance and clear it again. But this is optional since you won't know how the enemies will react. I'm also now prone to ganking because I'm deep in the enemy territory. Fighters normally do lean cutting because... Always remember no risk, no reward. So if you get good in situations like that, and don't worry, like if you're new to doing this, the first few times you try it, maybe it goes bad. Maybe maybe you don't perform it too well. That you, that's not when you give up. That's when you try to figure out what you're doing wrong and try to improve that. Because then once you get really good at doing this, you start to judge and understand what situations you should and should not be doing this. And you'll, I mean, it'll you'll become a lot more, you know, solid when you do this. You'll become a lot more beneficial to your team when you do it. So it's okay if you catch a few L's. Like, this game, you win, you lose some. You win some, you lose some. So if it's your fault that you're losing because you keep trying this, at some point, if you if you perfect this, it's, you're going to start winning because of it. So it, it's okay to keep practicing and not getting it right the first time. Don't feel like you have to be perfect the second you do something, otherwise you give up. Like, just keep trying it. You'll get good at it, and then you'll improve as a player. You'll be a, very solid at it. Because of their versatility, but not everyone is suited to cut lanes. Before you cut lanes, your heroes must have mobility and fast wave clearing. Examples are Pajito, Uranus, Ruby, and Benedetta. Remember though, enemies can easily team up and gank you because you are in their territory. Number 2. Freeze Lane Freeze lane refers to a strategy where you manipulate the minion wave to stay in an area rather than pushing toward the enemy tower. Instead of clearing, you will let the enemy minion kill yours while you zone the enemy. Example is this carry. I'm gonna play aggressive at the start. And when Mia backs off, I won't clear the minion wave. I'll just zone her out to create distance between her and my minion wave. By making her move away, she won't gain any resources because she's too far from the minion. One thing you need to worry about is when the minions target you. You have to move away or hide in the bush for a moment until... Well, they change target. Calls. Freezing minions is more effective on gold lane because they need to farm first. Fighters on the other hand are needed in objective takedowns which is why it's better to clear your minions faster. Number 3. Free Slain version 2 Another way to free slain is by manipulating your minions to stay near your tower. Here is an example. Right here, Tamus is giving me a hard time. I can't fight him head on and there's a yep. possible gank from the enemy jungler. To prevent that from happening, I will not attack this siege minion while bringing it a bit closer to my tower. This way, I get to clear my lane safely with my tower guarding me. It's a good strategy when the enemy has the advantage or you just need the tower's protection. Yep. Number 4, Lane Shoving The reverse of freezing lanes is lane shoving. It's where you intentionally push the minion waves as fast as possible for different reasons. 
First one is to create a gap between your lane opponent. Example is this Mortis. We killed him and he still has 20 seconds before respawning. I'll push as fast as I can so that his towers kill my minions. That's minus 1 minion wave from his resources. You can do this when you kill a lane opponent or when they are on the other side of the map. Another reason to lane shove is to force the enemies to react. You can control their movement by pushing fast and forcing them to defend their towers. Shoving the lane can create an opportunity for your team to take control of objectives like the Lord or towers in other lanes. Number 5. Slow Pushing Slow pushing is a strategy where you intentionally create a large minion wave that gradually pushes toward the enemy tower over time. Example is this lane. I'll kill all the enemy minions except for the siege minion and then I leave them. If no one touches that lane, my minions will build up slowly. And once it does, it can easily force the enemy to defend. The best part about it is that I can leave my lane to help with the team fights. I actually did not know this. Like the, this is actually some a good piece of information. I did not know about this one here. Yeah. But to be fair, I'm not a laner. I'm a jungler, so I, I probably shouldn't know about this. But yeah, there's still some good information to know. Like, because I see those moments when they happen in games. But yeah, usually it's like most of the time I just use some of the other techniques. Like, obviously, I know all the other ones. But that, yeah, that one's actually pretty cool. As you can see from this example, it now has several siege minions. This strategy prevents the wave from pushing too fast and allowing you to build a larger wave over time without exposing yourself in the minimap. Number 6. Lord Timer Knowing when the Lord will spawn is a crucial factor in minion management. As you all know, after eliminating a Lord, it will appear on the next minion wave. And minions will spawn every 30 and 10 seconds of each minute. Example is this scene. We kill the Lord at 9.32. That means the Lord will spawn with the minions at 9.40. Lord, speed, precision, and strength. Here are the minions, and then comes the Lord. Mm -hmm. By knowing the timer, you can prepare your team as well as the flow of the minions. You can also set a delay before you kill the Lord so that you have more time to prepare. Number 7. Simultaneous Attack Now that you have the Lord, the next minion strategy is to sync at least two lanes together with the Lord. Here is an example. The Lord is marching at mid lane. I need to clear this top lane minion so that we can arrive at the same time on the enemy's base. By doing so, the enemy's defense will be divided. It's a simple yet effective strategy. And the role mostly falls on the experienced laners to clear and adjust the far lane. Yeah, like that's, this is very, very important. Anytime you get lowered, you should probably be doing this. Like you should make sure all lanes are pushing at the same time. And this is something that a lot of players, especially if you play solo, a lot of players won't know this. Like. You, you definitely should want you want all lanes pushing at the exact same time because you just make it a lot harder on your on your um opponents but if you like clear a lane too fast and then they're all they're not in sync then it gives your enemy the time to clean clear one lane then clear the next lane then clear the next lane no you want all lanes pushing at once so they have to clear all of it at once which is going to be hard with you in their face attacking them too so yeah that's why it's so effective Another strategy is to slightly delay the minions before the Lord, just like this. By setting a delay, you can make the enemies focus their attention on the Lord while you collect minions. As you can see, the enemies are too focused on the Lord and now I can take this tower easily. Number 8. Grax Wall Grax Wall can stop the minions when they spawn by using his second skill. You can use it to make the minions fight nearer to your tower side. To do that, you can place a wall right here when the minions are about to spawn. And it's effective in the early game. This will give your teammates a safer way to clear the minion since it's nearer to your tower. Mm. That's, that's Number 9. Trick. Heroes with Minions Next are the following heroes that you shouldn't fight with minions because they become stronger. Brody because he can apply more stacks when you are behind minions. 
Vexana because her passive will make the minions go boom boom. Arlot because he can heal more with his second skill. Ruby and Alpha because they can heal better with minions nearby. And that's all the minion strategies we have for today. How about you? Do you have more minion tips? Share it in the comment section. That's all for this video. Stay safe and thank you for watching. Yo, these were some very good tips. This is very good tips. I actually learned some stuff with this, bro. Like, this is a very, very good video. Shout out to them, man. Shout out to them. Very, very good work, man. But yeah, there we have it, y'all. Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications, man. And I will catch you all on the next one. Peace out, fam.